There's the ultimate prize this year, a trip to the Target Center next week, and a shot at the national championship. But first, from Minneapolis, a regional final between two teams, one a huge surprise and another a perennial power. We welcome you inside Maturi Pavilion, known as the PAV. It's the defending national champions from Nebraska versus the Oregon Ducks who stunned Minnesota yesterday on their home floor. Is another major upset possible? We're about to find out. Let's take a look at the action from yesterday. Expected a really tough match between Nebraska and a much improved team from the SEC, the Kentucky Wildcats, but it was all the Cornhuskers in a three sets to none sweep. In the second half of the doubleheader, it was drama from start to finish. Number 15, Oregon eliminates the second seed in homestanding Minnesota Golden Gophers in a historic second set, 41 to 39. And that sets up the bracket for the regional final Saturday. Illinois and Wisconsin are still underway. Illinois leading two sets to one in the nightcap, Stanford versus Penn State, Texas and BYU. And then of course we will have, will we have another upset? Nebraska taking on the Oregon Ducks. Hi everybody and welcome, I'm Paul Sunderland. Joined once again by my partner, U.S. National Team Head Coach, Karch Kirai. You played in some very long, tough tournaments. Oregon is facing a real challenge. What can they possibly have left at their what, after what they did yesterday? What a stunner, but it wasn't a stunner for the Ducks. That was the second time they beat Minnesota and really took the air out of the sails of Minnesota with that 41-39 win. The question is, can they regroup? They After their first win early in the season, they were very flat against Penn State. They're looking to change that equation. Of course, for Nebraska, it's business as usual. They're trying to get to their fourth straight national semifinal. Quick, really came out strong against Kentucky. Quick work early yesterday afternoon, and Nebraska has a senior duo of captains that are rewriting their record book, which is pretty darn hard to do. Yeah, played three and a half NCAA tournaments so far in their career. A <laughs> one loss in those three and a half tournaments, led by the first touches of Maloney and the third touches often of Michaela Fecky, as in there. They like to set her in the front court and in the back court got a cannon of an arm. One of the focuses on what is now probably the best defensive team in the country, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, will be Ronica Stone. Three sets to two against Baylor, they couldn't stop her. Last night in four sets, Minnesota couldn't stop her either. No, you can't. I don't think you can leave her one-on-one. -on -one. She was huge, a big game hunter against Minnesota, hitting 500. There's an example of one blocker against her. Nebraska says they have a plan. We'll see what it is, but Stone is a handful. Veronica Stone hit 475 on the average between those two matches, and, and Matt Ulmer looks pretty relaxed. He and his players are saying all the right things about this matchup and the energy that they need to regenerate in a little bit over 24 hours in order to take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, a team that has won the national championship five times in total and four times under 19-year head coach John Cook. Also a member of the ABCA, the American Volleyball Coaches Association Hall of Fame, inducted last year. And speaking of fives, also a five-time National Coach of the Year. And when we talked to him earlier today at Servant Pass, we asked him specifically about Ronica Stone and potential matchups, and he said, I have to plan, I have a plan. You'll just have to wait and see. Well, one of the things is, is they trust their defense well. So he said, every day we practice having our left side blockers, Michaela Fecky, Lexi Sun, walking one on one on the slide. That's that hit behind the setter to the right sideline off one foot. I'm not sure they can leave Veronica Stone one on one. They also have to be concerned with the great offense of August Rasky, the setter for Oregon. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. The Oregon Ducks, look, getting this far in the tournament is not necessarily that new to them. They played for the championship in 2012, eventually lost to Texas. But Nebraska, they are truly one of the elite programs in the history of the sport, and the numbers prove it out. And the one time Oregon made the semis, they beat the Huskers in the regional finals in Omaha in 20, uh, 2012 and ended up losing in the NCAA final match. This is the eighth meeting all time between Nebraska and Oregon, the third ever meeting in the NCAA tournament. You alluded to the victory by the Oregon Ducks in 2012 over the Nebraska Corn Huskers. Nebraska returned the favor a year later in 2013. Oregon will be in their green uniform. 
Rams 23 now and 10 after their win yesterday afternoon. Again, they come in as the 15 seed, 13 and 7 for second place finish. Their best ever as a program in the Pac-12. Nebraska 27 and 6 overall, 15 and 11 for 15 and 5. Excuse me for third in the Big Ten Conference. And now they have won 11 matches in a row as Lexi Sun, the transfer from Texas, and there is Michaela Becky, as you pointed out. She and the wonderful defender Kenzie Maloney are looking to get to four straight national semifinals, something no other Nebraska team or program has done. Coach Cook talked about it, the all-time great Huskers. He ranks Jordan Larson up there clearly at number one, and then two and three, maybe some tie or combination there of Sarah Pavin and Michaela Fecky, but this could put Ma Michaela Fecky certainly four straight. No Husker ever done that. That would give her a unique accomplishment along with Kenzie Maloney. And also twice as a freshman and then last year as a junior was the most outstanding player in the NCAA championship. She shared that award last year with her setter, Kelly Hunter. Nebraska in their white uniforms, they'll start in rotation number one, which means freshman setter Nicklin Hames will be in the right back position. The first freshman ever to start at the setting position for the Cornhuskers and we're underway. Shot up into the block, offensive rebound, restart the point. That over the top, and Lexi Sun, number 10 in white. The Nebraska coach is immediately looking for a touch, and one was detected by the linesman right behind the play. Could we have a challenge on the very first play of the game? We are. <laughs> we are. We <laughs> need you. It didn't stop last night. Both teams used so many of their challenges that most of all but one were gone after that long 41-39 set. But Karch, given the format in college volleyball where you're limited to three challenges unless you go five sets, what do you think about taking one on the very first play of the match? I think that has to be Co Coach Ulmer's decision that he wants to come out strong. He saw what Kentucky did, and Nebraska just put Kentucky on its heels. That doesn't look like a touch. But of course, it has to be very clear evidence to over overturn the call. There's a good view or a better view. And the reason I bring up, bring up the point, because internationally, when pe people watch at the Olympics and the format that you play in when coaching the national team, you have two challenges per set. But if you're correct, you keep it. Yes. I mean, these are really valuable. Just ask Minnesota how valuable the challenges are. We had tremendous controversy last night. Pancake by Samantha Seliger Swenson. The 5,500 strong, or minus the Oregon fans, all thought the ball was up. Video replay showed that the ball was down. If the ball was ruled up, Minnesota would have won that marathon set. Instead, they had to regroup, continue to play. Oregon went on to win 41-39 and won the match. And there was no touch detected. The ball is out of bounds. But, but, is that one point more valuable than that challenge later on in this match. That's going to be very interesting. Let's remember that at the end of this first set. Obviously, every point of equal value, whether it's at 0 0 or 24 all. Tough short serve. That ball off of Haynes. She's in the back court. And remember at serve and pass earlier today, Matt Ulmer told us that Michaela Fecky is really a good passer, but they want to put her a little bit on a string forward and back. In fact, Coach Cook said the same thing. Both teams are going to try to yo-yo to serve short and deep. Fecky, that's Oregon going at Fecky, and Nebraska will be doing the same. Expect them to be doing the same thing at Vanderwater. Capri Davis starting. In rotation number one, she'll immediately give way to Jazz Sweet Davis, a 6'1 freshman out of Mansfield, Texas. This is quite unusual in for just that one rotation, but because Fecky and Son both play full time, Nebraska doesn't have to worry about overusing their substitutions. The only time they might is if they go 49 31 and <laughs> run out of subs like Oregon did yesterday, and then Brooke Van Sickle took over and got him a couple of kills to finish it off. First kill of the evening for Ronica Stone, 6'2 junior out of San Jose, California, an all Pac-12 performer. We'll get more into the numbers as that serve is missed by Willow Johnson. 
Veronica Stone has just been spectacular. Three sets to two victory in Eugene over Baylor. 15-13 in the fifth, she hits 450, and then comes to Minnesota and hits 500 last night. And they got her 36 attempts. They want to get her the ball as often as possible. You can see right now that serve going out of bounds, but it looks like the matchup is Stone against Fecky across the net. Fecky going to be trying to contain her one-on-one -on -one as a blocker. Well, head coach John Cook in Nebraska said he had a plan, and now that has exposed itself. All-American outside attacker. Nice swing off the top of the block by number 12 in white. Jazz sweep in her sophomore season after making the All-Big Ten freshman team last year and coming on will be Megan Miller out of Alexandria, Indiana, to come in and serve and play some defense. 15 substitutions allowed in women's college volleyball, so you see a lot of players going in and out, and that does not include the exchanges between the Libros and the middle blockers. That ball might have been going out of bounds. Nice dig. Kenzie Maloney got a hand on it, but just ran out of real estate. And the first kill by number eight, Lindsay Vanderweide, and the six foot three senior out of Turlock, California. She wore number she wore number 13 last night because of an equipment problem. We said, wait a minute, why are you tempting fate? She says, look, I, I am number eight. <laughs> My career's winding down. I don't have that much time left. I'm going to wear a number eight. Nice swing down the line by Lauren Stiffern, 6'4", sophomore out of Scottsdale, Arizona. First team, all Big Ten selection. Yeah, for Vanderweide, number 13 was lucky number 13 last night in that great win against Minnesota. I don't think I would have changed. <laughs> I would have stayed in that jersey. All right, let's see. Fecky, one of the best servers for Kentucky, uh, sorry, for Nebraska, goes away from Vanderweide and challenges the freshman Libero. Quickly out of the back row, nice dig by Willow Johnson. Oregon keeping the ball alive. Leading 5-4 early in this first set. Best three out of five sets, and there is Stiverens again. Lauren Stiverens hits 4-11 on the year. And I asked John Cook, or we both did earlier today, I said, wow, she got 22 swings. You really set her a lot. <laughs> what are you, crazy? We're going to get her the ball every chance we get. Especially off free balls, because they're perfectly in system to pass right where they want to. That ball tipped out of bounds by Lauren Page, the six-foot senior out of Riverside, California. An unforced error, and Nebraska takes the 6-5 advantage. Becky is a really good server. If you look at her aces throughout the course of her career, but also what teams pass against her, a very low, oh, tough serve. Handled quite nicely by Nunaville. Connection not there again, out of the middle, and the ball thrown over the top. Brooke Nunaviller, 5'11", freshman out of Chandler, Arizona, doing a really good job for Oregon. Paul, you could see the setter for Oregon. She's now at the service line, August Rasky, jumping really hard. She's a huge offensive threat, unlike most setters, and Nebraska very concerned about her, treating her as an attacker. Had 10 kills last night in the upset over Minnesota. A lot of sets being left short right here. Lexi Sun with a kill. I agree with you, Paul. Rasky is so concerned about trying to draw attention to herself that she's not doing her primary job, which is just put up a hittable ball, put it in a good spot at the right height, the right speed. Nebraska leading 7-6. Again, best three out of five sets. First four sets to 25 points. Rally scoring. Must win by two. Tiebreaker. Fifth set will be played to 15. Nunaville are very nicely done, and Willow Johnson playing in the opposite and hitting a number of different tempos across the net. She sure can. She can run from the left side of the court. You see her running to the right on your screen, and she gets herself a one-on-one -on -one attack. That's not easy to do when you run to your right as a left-hander and then hit it back cross court. Ball off the top of the tape. Boy, that looked like it hit the floor, and it might need another challenge. And Ulmer, very, Coach Ulmer, very frustrated with that because he's already used one challenge, doesn't want to have to burn another one. Well, he didn't need to burn it because Lindsey Vanderweider crushed that ball out of the pipe and put the ball to the floor. I thought that ball... The short serve off the tape was clearly on the floor. Lexi Sun with a nice swing into the cross court. Off to a pretty good start offensively for the transfer from the University of Texas. Lexi Sun, 6'2", sophomore out of Encinitas. 
California. A lot of eyes on her. That is a big decision to leave a program like Texas and move on to Nebraska. Here is the outstanding freshman Libero, Brooke Nunaviller, back to serve. Averages almost five digs per set and getting five digs per set so far in the tournament. All right, thank you, Tiffany. It was rocking in Illinois. And uh, congratulations to the Fighting Illini moving on to the national semifinals right here next week at the Target Center. Oregon in the green. Pulled off the big upset last night over the second-ranked Minnesota Golden Gophers. Three sets to one, taking on the defending national champions from Nebraska. Nebraska an easy winner last night over the University of Kentucky. Oregon had very few, if any, awkward plays like that all night long. They were very, very clean when they beat Minnesota. Oregon looking for their second ever trip to the national semifinals. They were there in 2012 and Nebraska looking for their 15th overall and fourth straight appearance. Well, so far Nebraska looking to test Nunaviller a lot off their serve, making her touch every first contact. Well, there's a story behind that. We'll get to it in just a moment after this point. Beautiful first contact. And that time off of Veronica Stone, Kelly Schwarzenbach, the 6'5 freshman from Kearney, Missouri, able to put that ball away. We looked at the box score last night, and Lindsey Vanderweide, who's in the middle back right now for Oregon, wearing number eight, received 59 serves out of 107, and she, we thought she passed lights out against Minnesota. So Nebraska has certainly changed things up. Yep, and they're getting a lot more success than Minnesota was able to with their service pressure. Nice dig by Nunaviller. Borup's got to find a way to put the ball away, and instead, you go to the big hammer out of the back row, Lindsey Vanderweide. Vanderweide had 17 kills yesterday against Minnesota on 40 swings. Yeah, and the Sederowski is so comfortable in this transition situation that sometimes you'd think, you know, that doesn't make the most sense, that kind of decision, but for them and their connection, it's working even though there were going to be generally more blockers in front of her. Ball kept alive by Haynes. There's one of the tips. Again, 10 kills last night against Minnesota. Yeah, and the Nebraska coaching staff upset at Schwarzenbach for not honoring her as a hitter. Nobody up. They talked about it this morning at the scouting report. We have to treat her as a hitter, have to have a blocker in front of her. Good start for Oregon. You wonder where they would be emotionally, and we talked about it, Karch, before first serve after expending so much energy less than 24 hours ago. The connection not there, but Ronica Stone is such a high flyer, she's able to tip the ball over the top and find some open floor, and Nebraska head coach John Cook is not happy right now at all. He is livid. They are not executing the game plan they spoke about. They're not following August Rasky, and they're not getting the matchup they want by any stretch of the imagination with the likes of uh, Ronica Stone either. Welcome everybody inside the arena here, the Maturi Pavilion in Minneapolis. A big prize at stake. And again, Cart, you've got to talk about the headline from yesterday, Oregon pulling off, at least in 2018, a monumental upset. Before yesterday, Nebraska, excuse me, Minnesota on this floor was 61 and two in home matches. Now they're 61 and three. It was a stunner, but the Ducks say it's not a stunner. We beat them earlier in the season and we feel the Ducks feel that they are a great away team. They would rather have played Minnesota here than on a neutral or on their home floor. They were right. A lot of other people were wrong on that one, but what an amazing and epic second set 41 39. Some controversy, calls that could have gone either way, lots of challenges having to be burned wow. so that between the two teams, there was only one left by the end of the second set. I thought that was a lot of coach speak by Matt Ulmer about loving so much to be on the road, <laughs> but now that they're 11 and three on the road after last night, I am indeed a believer. There you see the rest of the schedule. 
Illinois, congratulations to Chris Thomas and the Fighting Illini back in the national semifinals. They've had a wonderful season. They were second in the Big Ten Conference behind Minnesota. They take out number six seed, Wisconsin, three sets to one. We're here in Minneapolis. That'll be followed by Texas and BYU and Stanford and Penn State still to come. Not often you see a Nebraska team coached by John Cook not following the game plan. He was really upset going into that timeout. Dub on target. Got to watch for the tip. At the, oh, might have been out of bounds. Bora played it anyway. Oh, I don't like that set. Easy play for Nebraska. There is Michaela Fecky down the line. Out of West Point, Iowa, the 6'3 senior. We talked about her prowess at the national finals. First team all Big Ten for the second time. Really, really outstanding all-around player. Passes well, defends. She had 29 digs against Penn State earlier in the year. Bora getting a swing and stuffed straight down by Jazz Swoop. And normally what happens, Paul, in the way these two teams start, Bora ends up hitting against a generally stronger right side blocker, outside blocker, the opposite for the other team. In this case, Jazz Sweet. Perfect pass by Nunaviller and Teronica Stone ripped down the line. Nebraska is really testing the freshman Libero Nunaviller, and she is doing a really good job. And it'll be interesting. I think Nebraska likes the matchup also that when the setter for uh, for Oregon, August Rasky, is at the net, they have their own more experienced middle blocker. Lauren Stiffrens at the net to handle her. We'll see what happens. If Oregon has a close pass here, Stiffrens should be honoring her as an attacker. Van Sickle with a miss serve. Oregon's lead is one. Megan Miller, defensive specialist, on to serve once again. And another ball thrown to the floor, and John Cook just shakes his head. And <laughs> the coaching staff is thinking, look, we talked about that this morning. The problem on that one is that pass was not in the center of the net or the center of the court. It was off to the side, so that was more Michaela Fecky's responsibility. And that ball served out of bounds, back-to-back -back service errors. Nebraska's been told again and again and again, but when you see it, and remember, and you pointed out last night, Rasky's left-handed. That makes her even more dangerous on that particular tip straight to the floor on the second contest. She can slam it with either hand but uh, or, or kind of slam dunk it, but she can also just turn and swing as a left-handed hitter. Fecky is serving BBs. Oh, not a great free ball pass. Not at all. Off speed, and that ball falls. Lexi Sun registers her third kill. Ronica Stone, as usual, leading the way for Oregon. She's a perfect five for five. Both teams good offensive numbers. Early on, Oregon hitting 391, Nebraska hitting 333. Well, here is Fecky again. I mean, the aces, she has over 100 aces in her career, but what are teams passing against her? Really tough serve, handled nicely by Van Sickle. Stiffrens tipping to the floor in front of Nunaville. And the middle blocker for Oregon, Lauren Page, if she's not going to block, she has to get over there and help out on tip coverage, playing underneath her own blocker. 6-2 run for the Cornhuskers, who have a lot of fans here in the building. Nebraska always travels exceptionally well. Overpass and tipped again. August Rasky with her third kill. Again, had 10 against Minnesota. This is exactly why she's such a handful. You have to watch out for the swing with the left hand, the slam dunk with the left hand, and the slam dunk with the right. She's got a variety of shots, and it's something that, Paul, she didn't get to use a lot in her career because for three years she was a part of a two-setter offense which meant she only set while she was in the back row. Now she's finally free to add this facet to her game, and it's made the Oregon offense significantly tougher to defend. Haley Densberger, another defensive specialist, 5'9", sophomore, on to serve. Going after Van Sickle. They are not serving Van Der Weide. And Lauren Page able to throw that ball up into the block of Nebraska and get a fortunate kill. And I'm guessing nobody from Minnesota is watching this match, but if they were, they'd be thinking, why didn't we try somebody besides Vanderweide? We just 
didn't test some of the younger players with less experience than than somebody like her who's been around so long and done so much uh, effective work for the Oregon Ducks. Once again last night, Minnesota served 107 times, 59 of those to Vanderweide, and she was up to the task. Page, nice touch out of the middle by Schwarzenbach. And Lexi Sun off the top of the block. Both linesmen called the touch immediately. Very tightly contested opening set. Nebraska on top, 18 to 17. With those precious challenges, you see the whole coaching staff jumping up. <laughs> Give us the right call. Give us that touch. Hame serving once again. Oh, tough serve to Vanderweider. A little bit of hesitation that time between the Libero, Gunnaviller, number five in the bright yellow jersey, and Vanderweider. They're yeah. talking it over right now. That was nicely done in that scene by the Nebraska server, Nicklin Hayes. Yeah, if you're not getting served consistently, it's hard to know when to jump in. We will step aside, get used to seeing the skyline of Minneapolis. This is where we'll be next week for the NCAA championship. Will it be Oregon or Nebraska? It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. Back at the University of Minnesota, and what a tremendous fan base this community has been, has developed and has become. Minnesota lost yesterday in a crushing upset. Yeah, there are a lot of Nebraska fans, and there are some Oregon fans sprinkled in, but this is just tremendous support for this tournament here in Minneapolis, and we expect more of the same next week at the Target Center. It's really a tribute to what has been built here in the city and by the university. It's such a good program under Mike Hebert prior to Hugh McCutcheon coming from international volleyball here to Minneapolis. Really, really wonderful fan support, and we appreciate it. Yeah, sweet. Vanderweide has got to dig that ball. Nunaviller is going to run out of real estate. That was not a very tough chance, Nunaviller, and a slight collision with one of the courtside fans. You want to beat Nebraska, you got to make that play defensively. That was just off her left hip. She made the right read, but certainly didn't make the right contact. Nebraska on top, 20 to 18. Very, very close opening set. Both teams red hot offensively. Nebraska hitting 423. Oregon hitting 407. That's a 407 number against the country's best defense. Number one in the country holding teams. Opponents hitting percentage is 132. And a team that has held 13 yeah. different opponents to their lowest, their worst offensive production of the whole season, including yesterday against Kentucky. Overpass. Borup able to put the ball to the floor. Nebraska struggling just a little bit with their service and their serve receive and first contact. I think Oregon's doing a nice job of mixing depths. Serving short, making a middle touch the ball, and keeping the ball, keeping Maloney, their best, the best passer for Nebraska moving. Outside to Fecky. There's nice a better dig. Touch. Much better touch by Vanderweider, but not a good set in transition and Oregon pays the price. You are right, Paul. That is such a tough swing. You've got to give your front row left side some chances. You've got to give Taylor Borup a chance there. It's just so much easier to hit from three feet off the net than from 16 feet off the net. Here is Kenzie Maloney, outstanding Libero. What a wonderful receiver. Very high percentage of perfect pass, and Borup one on one. You can't ask for more out of your offense. An unforced error off the left side. Kenzie Maloney looking over to the coaching staff. There's John Cook giving the area where he wants to serve. That was area number five. We'll get back to that momentarily. On every serve by Nebraska, the head coach will tell them where he wants to direct that serve. We'll be right back. Opening set here at the Minneapolis Regional, a trip to the national semifinals at stake. Nebraska on top of Oregon, 22 to 20. We're talking about serving areas. Well, let's take a look at exactly what John Cook is talking about. Yeah, and they're numbered in the order of servers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, counterclockwise around the court. The general calls would be one or five. And then, of course, if you want to serve the passer in the middle of the court, uh, closer to the end line, you go zone six. So let's watch Coach Cook now. 
who will put signals behind his clipboard with his right hand. He may not show it this time. Nope, he's got it two, which is short in front of the bro. Brooke Nonaviller, and they get a chance to score a point here. Stone misses the ball out of bounds. And so one of the reasons they want to serve that short area, Paul, is that is the zone that Veronica Stone wants to run through. That's the, one, the zone she'll approach through. So if they can pull Nunaviller up short, they can get her to disrupt the pattern. Nope, they, sh they switch it and they go to zone five, one on one, but good blocking by Sweet. Really nice delivery that time by Rasky and Veronica Stone, after missing one ball out of bounds, is able to tip that ball through the block. You can see John Cook, all of his attention is on the opponent's court. None of it is on his own. He's looking at those different areas and seams. Sometimes you'll see a coach go five fist, which means in the five six seam. And another miss serve. This one by Van Sickle. That is the fourth miss serve of a set so far for Oregon. That's too many. Set point number one, Nebraska leading 24 21. The Nebraska fans is as their custom, whether it's at the Devaney Center or on, the, I guess this is, a, yeah, this is a neutral court for them, although they've been here before. And that ball served out of bounds. That's five service errors for Nebraska. So nine total. This was a good rotation. Ronica Stone did a very nice job last night against Minnesota from the service line. And you've got Van de Weide in the front court in transition if they can dig a ball. Stiverens, nice cover. That ball wristed over the top, a little confusion. Oregon doesn't get a swing. Tip to the floor, nice job on the change of pace by Michaela Fecky. And Nebraska is one step closer to yet another national semifinal. It would be their 15th. Lexi Sun had four kills. Lauren Stiverens had four kills. Nebraska hits 400 to take the opening set in this best three out of five regional final over Oregon. Back with the second set in Minneapolis right after this. Oregon with a huge upset over Minnesota, now going against the ever strong Nebraska. Next one after that, BYU Texas. Big controversy as to who should have gotten the four seed there. We'll, we'll learn soon. And then the heavyweights Stanford, Penn State, seven NCAA championships each going for an eighth. What a fantastic day. Oregon, Nebraska up the road. We, we, we got to go. We better get going. We got to go. Back in Minneapolis, Nebraska up one set to none, and there is number seven in green. Veronica Stone, the offensive star so far in the tournament for the Oregon Ducks, and we talked to her before the match, and she told us, look, about energy and how much of a toll that match last night took. Well, she's dancing right now. Need more of that. As good as the win was last night, we are not done. But Coach Matt Ulmer said, if you want to beat Nebraska, you have to give more than you did last night. And that's the question, and you pointed out during the commercial, from an energy standpoint, Oregon looks a little bit flat, and that's understandable after that, what they went through last night to oust the number two seed. That's what makes this tournament format so challenging, Paul. Teams rarely play on back-to-back -back days, except very early pre-conference. They might play even two per day in the early tournaments, but then they don't play a lot of back-to-backs, and they have to do it first and second round, and then in the regionals. Very difficult for Oregon to bring the energy back after all spending so much yesterday. 
Willow Johnson ripping down the line after a good serve from Van Der Weide to get Nebraska out of system. And still around the 20 all mark, it was either's, either teams to win in the first set. A few too many hitting errors for the Ducks and a few too many service errors for Nebraska. Jazz Sweet just keeping that ball in play. Rasky with the dig, but Oregon doesn't get a good swing out of it, but a very nice change of pace. Remember, statistically, Nebraska is the best defensive team in the country. They are not so far, and John Cook has talked to him about it a number of times. He's going to make a sub in this particular rotation. Capri Davis is going to come on and hit for this one rotation. They were trying to get out of this, what we call rotation one. That's setter in the right back. They were trying to get out of it without bringing Jazz Sweet out of the game. Unsuccessful. Now they set for Capri. And she'll check right back out of the game. She did her job. It's an unusual one. Come in and be ready to take a swing just for the other team's service turn. Now Jazz Sweet checks back in. When Jazz Sweet gets back to left front, they'll look to do the same thing. Tough for a left-hander sometime to hit out on the left in rotation number one. Here's Lexi Sun. Vandewater finding some rhythm as a passer, and so is Willow Johnson, who only had one swing in the opening set. She's already got two here immediately as Oregon goes out to the early 3-1 lead here in the second. And she can hit with some range. We saw her going pretty sharp against Minnesota when she took something off of it. She kept it in, inside the wide sideline. Had 15 kills yesterday on 33 swings. Outside to Fecky again, off the top of the block and down for number two in white. Taylor bore up much like last night, not really involved in the offense to the extent that Oregon needs her on the slide. There's the play. Ronica Stone has major hang time. It just goes up and paint brushes that ball right in the middle of the court. What a great adjustment by Stone. This is a bit of a misconnect. They want, she wants to take a big swing at the ball, when, but when it's not there, she makes something out of nothing. She did it often last night against a pretty strong Minnesota block. Nice touch by Stone and another kill. August Rasky really being offensive in the setting position. Now four kills on six swings. Yeah, and you could see on that play when she jumps, the middle blocker for Nebraska has to jump, and that causes problems, leaving fewer blockers on the other Oregon hitters. Easy serve to Maloney, and Oregon pays the price. Number two, Michaela Fecky with yet another kill on the outside. Fecky is an absolutely brilliant student, wants to go on and potentially be a vet and uh, has a decision to be made because obviously she has a career ahead of her as a professional volleyball player, both on the club scene and potentially for you on Team USA. She absolutely has a volleyball future and certainly has a veterinary future too. Nice rhythm to the outside and Taylor Borup really needed that, number 17 in green, finding a hole in the block, a low seam and hammering that ball right to the floor. Borup really struggled in the opening set. She was just one for seven with a couple of errors, and both teams trying to serve tough. That is the fifth service error for the Oregon Ducks. Oregon again, 23 and 10 on the year. Had a really good Pac-12 season, a little bit up and down. Nebraska 27 and six on a really nice trend right now. 15 and five for third best in the Big Ten Conference. Coach Cooks showing zone one, cross court corner. Fecky doesn't find but still creates a chance. Van de Weide again, high flat. Fecky with a nice dig. And Lexi Sun throwing that ball out of bounds. I think that ball was clearly out of bounds. A little, little begging for the touch there. Well, that's a mistake a lot of hitters make in college ball, and that is they throw the ball out of bounds and hope it hits something on the way out rather than throwing it into the block and make the ball come back or then go out of bounds. Stivrens ripping that ball into the deep cross court. Our crew in the truck telling us they thought it looked like a touch on Lexi Sun's attempt, but no challenge called or asked for as Willow Johnson, the daughter of five-time Cy Young Award winner and Hall of Famer Randy Johnson. 
Here is Densberger. Nebraska leading one set to none, but trailing here 7-5. Look at Fecky play some defense right on target. Nice set. Out of the back row, Fecky again. Willow Johnson, what a dig in the cross court by Miller. <laughs> Heavyweight fight. Two teams exchanging big blows. Big backcourt swing from Willow Johnson. They want her in this particular rotation. She's, she can take some big cuts with her left arm. Nebraska's found something. They're getting Oregon out of system a lot. And Willow Johnson again wearing number four in green after a very quiet first set. Just because she didn't get many opportunities already with her third kill here in the second. Well, you know what? <laughs> he could throw 100 plus. He can probably hit about 70 plus. He's got that same whippy arm. Dug by Rasky. That was Fecky out of the backcourt again. Swung into the crosscourt. What a stab by Nunaviller. And again by McKenzie. Oh, let me rephrase that. <laughs> Kenzie Maloney. <laughs> Battle of the Bros. Good cover. Oh. To me, that looked like that touched the block, Paul. Well, Coach Cook of Nebraska looking at it. He's got all three of his challenges remaining. We had so many great exchanges on the Libero position last night between CeCe McGraw for Minnesota and Nunavilla. Same thing. Oh, and another one. Inside, dug by Maloney again. And Lauren Page on the crossbody out of the middle. What an exchange once again by number 11 in the red Libero's jersey and the bright yellow on the other side. None of it are only a freshman. Kenzie Maloney is a senior. We'll step aside. Timeout called by Nebraska. Trailing 10-6 here in the second. Oregon with a huge upset over Minnesota now going against the ever strong Nebraska. Next one after that, BYU Texas. Big controversy as to who should have gotten the four seed there. We'll, we'll learn soon. And then the heavyweights, Stanford, Penn State, seven NCAA championships each going for an eighth. What a fantastic day. Oregon, Nebraska up the road. We, we, we got to go. We better get going. We got to go. Well, that was obviously earlier today. Let's uh, update things uh, on the bracket. Illinois has moved on. Number 15, Oregon yesterday eliminated Minnesota, the first host team, one of the top four seeds, to be moved aside. You know, when we were peering in the window, I could have sworn I saw some Penn State jerseys, some Stanford jerseys. There were a few Cougars from BYU and that burnt orange for Texas. They were kind of checking it out, you know, inside the Target Center. That's where everybody wants to be next week. Back to this one. Out of the timeout, Rasky back to serve. Lexi Sun, big swing, number 10 in white, over the top. We'll give you Sun's numbers so far. That's five kills on 14 swings, but you got to take away three hitting errors for Sun. And you know the best thing about that swing is it went far away from Brooke Nunaviller, who's been coming up with anything cross court. That ball served out of bounds. Nicklin Hames thought that she had dialed up an A. Six service error so far for Hames. Once again, the only freshman ever to start at the setting position for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Capri Davis on once again, number nine, for this one rotation in the left side. Short serve. 
And that ball off the top of the antenna and out of bounds. That's exactly what Oregon wanted to do is make Michaela Fecky take the ball, but just don't put it in her lap. Put it deep or put it short. Let's see where this one goes. 5-1 run now for the Ducks. Son off the edge of the block and out of bounds. Really nice using the edge of the block that time of Taylor Borup by Lexi Sun. Yeah, Lexi Sun got Nebraska out of trouble. Oregon created a scoring chance, but Sun finding that outside edge of the hand for a point for a kill. That's too close. Schwarzenbach with a left-handed slam dunk. And that'll go down. With a one-handed bandit being played by both teams. And Kelly Schwarzenbach, the six foot five freshman, the number 10 overall recruit coming out of high school last year. Very interesting recruiting story. You got to go to the easy go on Route 77 south of Lincoln <laughs> if you want to find out about Kelly Schwarzenbach. Nice tap down that time. Good and tough serve. It's starting to work from the service line for Sun in Nebraska. Back within two after trailing 12 7. Nebraska has moved the ball around much more so than Minnesota did last night, almost going exclusively after Vandewida. Page over the top. That ball is up legally. That looked like it was down. Yep. Late call there by the second referee. That ball ruled on the floor. A second referee is Margie Ray. Paul, there's also a different sound it makes when it hits the floor versus a hand. And that one was all floor. Or oh, Fecky looked like she was there, just not completely stretched out. Nice save nice. by Willow Johnson. And that's outside the antenna. Ball must pass inside the antenna. Pretty good work that time by August Rasky, negotiating not only going after this ball, but working around one of our camera positions as well. There Great. she goes. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't have to run back between the cameraman and the table. She had a more direct path to the court. Love the hustle. Nice rip that time on the combination play by Willow Johnson. Incredible work and concentration by our cameramen. I mean, are you kidding me? Never lost the shot and perfect framing. And he moved. He got out of the way to give her, <laughs> give her space to get in. Fecky rips down the line and missed it out of bounds. All the Nebraska players asking for a touch here. Let's take another look. Two points ago, the stab by Willow Johnson. See, look at, look at that. How do, you, how, do you, how do you keep that shot? Dana, you are a star. We all know that. Great to have you back on our crew once again. And Dana will be at the Target Center next week as well, and you just saw why. There is a challenge. All the Nebraska players, Lawrence Stiverens was there, Jazz Sweet, saying that there was a touch off the block. And as we've seen throughout the course of this year and all the previous seasons, Park, since the video replay system, was brought to the fore. This is the most difficult call to either confirm or to overturn. Just hard to tell with the speed of the ball. If next week at the NCAA semifinals and finals, we will have super slow mo that will give us and the players a much better look. What do you think? It's just I think hard that to tell. Might have gotten the left pinky. Uh, sorry, the left index finger of August Rasky. But as we've mentioned before, you have to have definitive proof to overturn a call. It has to be very clear and distinct. This, I think, is the best view to me where it could be touching that left pinky, and that's the call. Both teams have two tip challenges remaining, and the touch was confirmed by video replay and the call overturned. That makes it 14-12. Oregon has led throughout in this second set after losing the first 25-22. Oregon got out to the 10-6 lead, led it 12-7. And now back on once again is Megan Miller to serve and play defense.
off the top of the block and down once again for Ronica Stone. Stone now eight of nine. Remember, hit 500 just yesterday afternoon against Minnesota. And she had two blockers, two of Nebraska's best blockers with Fecky and Stivens in front of her. So what does she do? Swing a little harder, get a touch, a deflection that can't be tracked down. Sometimes the attacker is so good, it doesn't matter how many blockers are up, if the set is there. Uh, oh, just, that ball set way too tight, and it's going to immediately cost Nebraska a point. That's a ball handling error by Sun. The other scary thing about that, Paul, is that's the kind of play you can see leading to an injury, a player having to sprint way in and can land on a shoe or a foot across the net and sprain an ankle. Stiverens once again from the right side on the slide into the deep cross court corner. Stiverens now with six kills on 10 swings. That's why it's so important for either of these teams to serve tough so you can't serve, you set Ronica Stone or you can't set Lauren Stiverens. They're just so effective on that slide approach. Down the line, Maloney's got that ball back up. And Veronica Stone again. Look at the real estate that she covered from one set to the next. Yeah, first call she hit on the right sideline, and now watch, she's going to change it. Instead, go in front of the setter, and she gets herself a one on one swing there. Lexi Sun could not get in. There's just not enough time to react and get a second blocker in front of her. Two serves in a row by Oregon, right in the lap of Kinsey Maloney. I just don't understand that. She is among the two or three best passers in the country. Yep. And that's why you see Stiverens attacking so much, because of those easy serves. First contact, second contact. Far too easy for Nebraska. Stiverens now leading the way with seven kills for the Cornhuskers. And that ball drifts out of bounds by Densberger. That's the seventh service error. And we talked about the energy necessary for Oregon to bounce, bounce back both physically and emotionally after that incredible upset win yesterday against Minnesota. What do you think about their body language and their energy here in the second? Nice play by Fecky. One on one out of the back row. Well, Coach Elmer talked about it. We had a few rallies earlier where Nana Viller came up with some fantastic defensive plays. That time she fails to, but when she does, this team the Oregon Ducks team really gets energized. It's kind of like a Michaela Fecky kill to terminate a long rally for Nebraska. Here's Hames working short. Taken by Page and Willow Johnson is dug. Right side to Johnson again and turned this one cross body out of bounds down the line. Matt Ulmer's looking up at the scoreboard and thinking about a timeout. They have led throughout this second set. Ames in Nebraska. Back within two. Nice set. Jazz sweet down the line. None of Villar with a stab. Lexi Sun, good swing over the top of the block. A touch detected, a touch called by the linesman from behind. I think that was a good call. That is a really good high flat swing, perfectly executed. Yep, and Oregon was wondering, the coaching staff, they asked the blocker, Lauren Page, did you touch it? She said she did. Short serve again, causing Oregon some problems. Free ball coming to Nebraska. Oh, and they get a break. Look at that, Fecky went for the Fister over the top and uh, Kenzie Maloney couldn't track it down. Huge break for the Ducks. I thought that could have been a four touch call Paul, because the first contact by the Ducks was actually two players. They mm. didn't quite touch it at the same time. That's a really John good Cook, point. Probably talking about that right now. The whole substitution area for Nebraska was saying four hits. That's a really good call and the officials are going to talk it over as the video replay system has been expanded Four contacts is an area that can indeed be challenged along with ball up or down. Watch here. A little tough to see it from there, but two players touch that. So that next contact has to go over the net. Here's going to be a better view. One. Yeah. Two. Yeah. That's two contacts. Yeah. That ball has to go over. Van Sickle has to put that over and give a free ball to, to Nebraska. Oh, might have touched 
Page's face, too. Well, Coach Cook, uh, I'm not a very good lip reader, but I think you just said we're going to challenge that. You can challenge ball in or out, foot fault on the three meter line, foot fault on the service line, a touch off the block or not, ball off a player, or of course, out of bounds or a net violation. There you see the areas, and of course, expanded once again to four contacts or ball up or down. Remember, they used one very early on the Lexi Sun swing. Successful challenge, but it's gone. This is challenge number two. One more look. Yeah, that's two contacts. Yeah. Yep, good good catch, Karch. I think that's the right call if they reverse it and Coach Cook would obviously love to ch turn this into, with, since they're down by two, try to squeeze this second set out. It's huge to be up 2-0 in a regional, well, in any match, but certainly in a match like this. There is uh, John Cook's assistant, Kayla Banworth, silver medalist uh, at the Olympic Games and really helps the backcourt defense. Excuse me, bronze medal, excuse me. I'm trying to one-up, <laughs> moving it up. Still waiting on the call. NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage will continue next week, December 13th. Yeah, Santa's in the house. That's 7 o'clock Eastern time. And it is ruled as four contacts. So that's a 4 nothing run. That's not a gift from Santa Claus to Nebraska. That's absolutely the right call. The other thing that Oregon is not doing a nice job of right now, Paul, is they're not adjusting to the short serves of Nicklin Hames. They've got to get Warren Page out of the passing formation. The ball is in the air long enough so somebody like Vanderweide can come take it. She hits very, she attacks probably better after she passes anyway. Nicklin Hames to serve. Remember we talked to Matt Ulmer after the match last night, their big win over Minnesota. Asked him how important it was to take that nail biter, that marathon of a second set, 41-39. He thought his team was playing well. I think it's really important for Oregon, their chances in this regional final. They got to win this second set. Tied at 18. Coach Cook wants another short serve right to where Willow Johnson is standing. That one, oh, I can't wow. believe she took that. Passers behind her ready to touch it. Jazz Sweet is rejected. What a huge block by the Ducks. It's a really smart, a really effective strategy by Coach Cook because you have hitters who want to get out of the way and run routes to different areas of the court, and they're running right into the path of the serve. First block for the Ducks, and the timing could not have been better. Sun going off speed. And Bullitt misses it across the sideline. Oregon not playing very well in transition right now. Different formation for Oregon, so look for Lexi Sun to attack down the sideline. She's going to be aiming for zone one, according to the, the signal for the bench. Vanderweider, and the ball goes right through the hands of August Rasky. Big break for Nebraska. On top now, 20 to 19. Remember, Nebraska trailed 12-7 midway through the second set. Lexi Sun and the Nebraska Cornhuskers on a 6-1 run have taken their first lead here in the second card. We and again, serving is so key. Yeah, we showed you the zones earlier. So lower right on your screen, that area, uh, that open area of light brown is zone one. That's what Sun was aiming for on the last play. That's what she's aiming again for now, thanks to the signal from Coach Cook on the bench. Perfect pass. Kept alive by Nebraska. Oregon's got to get out of this rotation. Page over the top. And Lexi Sun unable to make the stab defensively. Tied at 20. Into the red zone. And one of the energy givers for the Oregon Ducks checking onto the court now. Ronica Stone at the net. Soon after that, Lauren Stiverens, the great middle for Nebraska, that will be doing the same. Outside to Bora. Ball set a little bit tight. Nice turn off the edge of Jazz Sweet. Really important swing for Bora, number 17. And earlier in this match, we saw her get stuffed because she hit it low into the elbow. That time, it was high off the pinky. 
of Jazz Sweet. Much more effective swing. We have a challenge on the floor. The Another challenge and final challenge. Yeah. Coach Cook really wants this second set. Well, he, like his counterpart, Matt Omer, I mean, I think this is vitally important. If Oregon goes down to Nebraska, two sets to none here, after all the yeah. energy they expended last night, wow, that's a huge ask. Yeah, and of course, I'm saying the obvious that you want the second set, but to get a team that has to turn around after expending so much emotional energy down 2-0, much tougher task to pull their way back after the short intermission. Being told from the scorer's table that the challenge is for a net violation on the attacker, and I don't see one. I don't either. We'll look at another angle, and the officials have some angles that we do not. Here's this a is, closer one. Yep. Don't see it. No. The net is not moving at all, so from your view, Karch, that point should stay with Oregon. I think so. I saw the touch before. Nebraska made a good call on that. Remember, this is Challenges are done for Nebraska with this. This is the third one all used in the same set. John Cook's been at this profession for a long, he's old school. They're just turning back the dial to old school before the video challenge. Well, you and I have talked about it before. I think the three challenges is a little too limiting. You want to get the right call. You want the players, not the referees, to determine the course of the game. So I like your idea much better, and that is three challenges, but you only lose one if you're wrong. Wrong, that's right. And as the process continues, part of it is, is based on a concern over time. How long does it take? And that will continue to improve. Yeah. So I would like to see you keep a challenge as long as you're correct. Yeah. You're I, right. The delays are too long. Yeah. I know it breaks the game up. But ultimately, you got to get the right call. And this game is fast. It's incredibly powerful. It's not easy to call some of those micro touches. So I think the referees are going to be better with the consistent extra help. We've seen that in the international volleyball stage. The technology will improve. Yeah. The cost will come down. That's obviously a factor. Yeah. But and situations like this, this is taken. Look at this. This is way too long. Of a, a national, delay. a national semifinal, a national semifinal at stake. That's that's hair. Hair is that's not a hair violation. Again. That's not a violation. But Nebraska could have thought that that was her shoulder. To me, that looks like her ponytail. Boy, this is just like last night. That incredibly dramatic reversal at 38-37 in the second set where Samantha Seliger Swenson thought that she had made a pancake. And she probably truly thought she had because you know, you get 90% of the ball, you think you've gotten it cleanly, but only 10% of the ball on the floor, and the ball was ruled down. Oregon eventually went on and won. Another oh, very, very tight call. Well, that one was across the net, but you could still see it was hair. That's the right call. Way too long of a delay, I grant you that. But over the long haul, you want to get the right call, and they'll get better at this over the next few years. Oregon leading 21-20, Nebraska out of challenges for the rest of this regional final. Unless, Nebraska crowd right back into it, unless, unless we go five. <laughs> Wrong person to serve, Maloney. I just don't get that. Wearing the red jersey, among the best Libros in the country, certainly one of the best receivers, and they've served a number of balls wait, to Maloney. Wait a minute, Paul, you're not supposed to serve the person with the different color? <laughs> not, when she's, <laughs> not when she's one of the best in the game. Tied at 21. Stuff block. That's the matchup that John Cook wanted. He wanted Michaela Fecky on Ronica Stone. Yep, and the short serving in Nebraska, taking Oregon out of its offense to where Rasky had to actually face the other sideline to run that play. Another short serve. Willow Johnson one on one. That ball dug on the sideline. Nona Viller had to play it. Big swing for Jazz Sweet. Off the top of the block and down. A net violation is going to be called. That's going to be called against Jazz Sweet following through on the swing. And if it wasn't, there's no chance to challenge now. All of those used in this second set. Tied at 22, another look. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, good call. 
That's great work by our crew. There is Johnson. I was about to say it had been pretty dangerous server. Pretty good movement, but missed it badly. Dangerous, but inexperienced. She had never served in a competition in a match for Oregon until one of the last few regular season matches. They gave her a try. She's actually been quite effective, but now is not the time to serve out and give Nebraska a free side out. 23-22. And that ball deep. None of Villers got it right on target. One on one. And Taylor Borup got a big break. Stiverens put up one hand and deflected it away from the her te Husker teammates. Credit that kill to Ronica Stone. She pulled two blockers with her. Fecky, money time right in between area one and area six. Set point. And a long way to go, but maybe a match point. This would be such a huge hole, such a huge hole for the Ducks to dig out of, trailing two sets to none. Set point for Nebraska. Stiverance tipping over the top and down. The defending national champions now just one more win away from getting back to the national semifinals for the fourth straight time. Something. No Cornhusker team has ever done before. Saturday, the national semifinals and finals. Minneapolis, the host, just down the road at the Target Center. And will Nebraska be there for a record setting fourth straight time? They are well on their way, up two sets to none over Oregon. Back with Karch Kirai. I said it felt like a match point because Oregon, again, expended so much energy. There's no, you know, overestimating how much Oregon had to work yesterday. Your thoughts so far on the play of both of these teams, particularly Nebraska, from 20 on. They've, they've really controlled that part of the match. Yeah, I don't know if either team would say they're playing their best or close to it, but it's a hard-fought contest. I think one of the things that's winning it for Nebraska is good serve placement, keeping the ball away from Vanderwaarde. On the other side, Oregon serving the best passer for Nebraska, yeah. Kenzie Maloney, too much, 13 times. Both sets were tied at 20. Nebraska wins them both, and that means it's Michaela Fecky time. Yeah, and she's hitting about 430 now, Paul. Big game, Fecky, and she's hitting that high 116 so effectively. Even when the block gets a hand on it, she hits it so hard that it's almost impossible to track it down. And also Kenzie Maloney time. Oregon maybe maybe making a mistake serving her, but also getting some wonderful touches at the defensive end. For Oregon again, it's about Ronica Stone. She was stopped by Fecky late, but they've got to somehow dig deep and find some energy. Their coach said they'd need to have more than they did yesterday when they beat Minnesota. And now it's going to take that much more down 2-0. The thing that they need to do is just win one set to start getting that belief back. They got the ball to Stone. 13 times she's hitting over 500 but they could do a lot better job of managing those short serves from Nebraska Stone what a dynamic explosive athlete yeah the serving strategy for Nebraska has really put some uh, confusion into the Oregon side 
Nebraska won the first 25-22, the second 25-23. On Saturday at 3 Eastern, catch number one Gonzaga as they take on number seven Tennessee in the Air Force Reserve Jerry Colangelo Classic. See if the Zags can keep their record perfect and improve on a 9-0 start. ESPN College Basketball Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern, live on ESPN and also streaming on the ESPN app. Back with three-time Olympic gold medalist and USA national team head coach Karch Kirai. I'm Paul Sunderland. There's Veronica Stone. Her numbers so far spectacular as usual. Nine of 13, a couple of errors hitting over 500, but blocking not there for the Oregon Ducks. Only one for the Ducks. Not much for Nebraska either. Only two, but they've really been winning the serving battle, particularly late in the sets. But tied at 20 again. Nebraska and Michaela Fecky, they go on a 5 2 run to close out the first, and then they outscore Oregon 5 3 to close out the second. And Oregon, neither team looking to change the matchups, Paul. Remember, you can start with any one of your six players who are on the court serving. You can spin it. And this is just how Nebraska started before when they were serving. Nicklin Haynes at the service line. And for Oregon, right back is Lindsey Vanderwerder. Same matchups as in the first two sets. Ooh. Unforced error out of the middle. Rasky getting aggressive, trying to get the ball into number six, Lauren Page. Becky leading the way with 10 kills. Lauren Stiverance has eight. Lexi Sun has seven. Short serving again. Look at that. Taylor Bora, who along with her, the other outside hitter, Lindsey Vanderweide, have really been struggling. A very, very fortunate flat-footed kill. Yeah, Vanderweide saw, really had trouble seeing that serve. She moved backward and then arrived very late. I, I can't believe any short serves would should surprise the Ducks at this point. They've seen about 25 of them so far. Schwarzenbach is dug. Sun tipping over the top. Ball kept alive. Free ball now coming to Nebraska. Not so free. Johnson down the line and off of Kenzie Maloney. Back to Lindsey Vanderweide, who carried a big load offensively, serve, receive, and attacking only four of 18 through the first couple of sets. And Taylor Borup was only four for 13. And Vanderweide. Fewer serve receptions tonight. Last night, as you mentioned, 59, only seven so far, or eight so far this match. God, well, that's that, such a tough swing. I don't like that choice. Ball set 14 feet off the net. That wasn't. That wasn't. <laughs> that's the easy swing. You want to give your players, I mean, it seems elementary, but give your players more easy swings, more hittable, and less 14 feet off the net. Where you're falling backwards. Great swing by Sun. She likes to crush that line when she's hitting behind the setter. And a perfect delivery by freshman setter Nicklin Hames. Combination play dug by Buck dug by Sun. Veronica Stone dug there. Nebraska making some adjustments at the defensive end, and then that hard off the top of the block by Michaela Fecky. That's what makes Fecky so hard to defend. The average hitter, that ball is going to pop off the block and stay inside the sidelines of the court. She put so much heat on it that it goes another 10, 10 feet further, and nobody can track it down. Fecky hitting 435, number of kills minus, which is 11 minus one error divided by the number of attempts. Outside to Bora. Nice stab by Haynes. Joust at the net. That ball kept alive. Ooh. And that's a double contact. August Rasky, who's been really good at the setting position for the Ducks all season long, has had one ball go through her hands, and that one was just mangled. Nebraska leading at 4 2, and Matt Ulmer takes a very early timeout. He knows that his ducks are in a precarious position.
Tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, we'll have the 84th Heisman Trophy ceremony. Will it be Alabama's Tua Tagovailoa or Oklahoma's Kyler Murray or Ohio State's Dwayne Haskins? What a list indeed. Find out who wins the most coveted award in college football Saturday at 8 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. After this point, going to ask you who is the counterpart in volleyball, Karch. Stuff blocked on the outside by Jazz Sweet. Working against Bora. Who are your candidates for the National Player of the Year? Well, you know what's interesting is it often has it that what happens today can often have an effect on that voting. So somebody's team could lose today, but obviously Jordan Poulter and her Illinois team has already won. So she would be a candidate. And of course, in this match, Michaela Fecky could lead her team to a fourth straight national semifinal. Have to be a solid choice there. A rare block on her. And then there's Catherine Plummer, who will be playing against with her Stanford Cardinal against Penn State. And another person who's had a phenomenal year is Ronnie Jones Perry for, for BYU coming up next as they host that regional final. Just like the Heisman list, again, that's on at 8 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. That's a pretty good list as well. Better set out of the back row. Vanderweide almost wasn't ready for a good back row set. Nice dig by Nunaviller. Right on target. And number 16 in green, Rasky takes things into her own hands. She hasn't had much of a chance to do that. I don't think she's locating her sets nearly as well or, or this decision making nearly as well as she did yesterday against Minnesota. But she certainly is a handful offensively. Ten kills yesterday. She's sitting on five right now after that one. Good first contact on target. Oregon's transition game, not where it was last night. Nebraska certainly is. Becky's so smart. We saw in the second set a number of plays where she hit and deflected the ball off to her right. That time she aims for the deep corner and nobody's there because the Oregon defense the backcourt floor defense had adjusted. Crack into the cross court by number 17. One on one choice that time by Rasky. Yeah, I like that choice. Got a really good swing for Borup. Borup now with six kills on 19 swings. Vandewijde only four kills on 21. Your two left sides. Van de Weide finds a small seam in the block. And sometimes when you're struggling, Karch, you played that position as an outside hitter. You get one dribble or find a small crack in the block and you'll, you'll get some confidence and get on a roll. The signal is the area between zone five and six, hitting that seam between Fecky and Lexi Sun. That ball into the antenna, uh, hitting air by number 12, Jazz Sweet. And here come the Oregon Ducks. Again, the first two sets very, very close, tied at 20. Nebraska won the first 25-22. Nebraska won the second 25-23. Oregon on a 5-1 run until that serve was missed into the middle of the net. Seventh service error for Oregon. Yeah, Borup checks out for most of the match last night. The player who comes in for her in the backcourt, Brooke Van, Zick, uh, Van Sickle, was doing the serving. Now Borup given the responsibility this evening. There is Miller again for the Cornhuskers. Van Dewey one on one dug by Sun playing some good defense in the middle back. Stabbed by Van Sickle and then big two woman block. Stiffrens along with Michaela Fecky working on Ronica Stone. They know how much Rasky likes to set a play like this. We saw it last night. Monica Stone got a great swing, but instead, four hands and nowhere to go in front of her. Chance again in transition. Rasky's got it up. Nice stab. Oregon, can they score in transition? The timing's not there. Ball just inside the antenna, and Fecky makes him pay. The center for Oregon, August Rasky, is trying Paul so hard to jump and attract attention that it's messing up their offensive timing. And she and her hitters aren't connecting nearly as well as they did last night against Minnesota. 
Uh, location not nearly as consistent for Rasky and the Oregon Ducks. And he's served by Nebraska. 10-7 is the lead. Remember, Oregon has already used a timeout. They called one very early at 4-2. You get two timeouts per set. Pretty streaky so far. Both teams answering with runs. Miller back to serve. 4-0 run for Nebraska going short again. Nice cover by Nunaviller. Nice hustle. What an effort by Oregon's Libero. And again. And Kenzie Maloney stretched out. What an exchange. Brooke Nunaviller, number five in the bright yellow jersey, given way. What an effort. First, the cover on the <laughs> touch number one, and then the dive on wow. touch number three. She's been really impressive, these two matches at the Minneapolis Regional. And it took a perfect tip shot by Van Sickle to get that ball away from Maloney. Oh, heavy, heavy, heavy heat from Fecky. That's a great choice by the setter, Nicklin Haynes for Nebraska. Listen to the heat on this ball. Oh, oh. Fecky at the net against the setter, August Rasky for Oregon, is a tough matchup for Oregon. Tough serve again. Oh, Lexi Sun. Almost whiffed it on the overpass. Over the easiest play she's had so far in this NCAA tournament. Like to have that one back. Big break for the Ducks. That gets them back within two. Oregon in transition again. Johnson stuffed straight down by Sun. How did Lexi Sun get her hands across the net on that play? Beautiful blocking move. Brilliant block by number 10. Again, made a lot of headlines when she transferred from Texas. Oh, just out of bounds. And remember, Nebraska has no challenges. That was very, very close. But back to Lexi Sun was all Big 12 last year for the Longhorns, an honorable mention All-American, but uh, decided to leave a Texas program that has had very, very few transfers. Shot into the deep corner. How clever is that? When I talked to John Cook, what he wanted most out of his freshman setter, he said tempo. And I kind of thought, well, what happened to location? Pretty good location on that shot. Pretty good. That really shouldn't catch the Oregon defense. That's much in surprise, though. That's a shot that has, you have enough. It's in the air long enough that you can track it down. Sweep down the line. None of Miller can't make the play. And now Oregon is in real trouble down 14-10. If you're Matt Ulmer, do you burn another time out here? The outside hitters. I would vote yes. The outside hitters for Oregon have really been slowed by the Nebraska block and defense. Another tough serve. Willow Johnson able to restore order a little bit. Remember that Oregon hit for a huge number in the opening set, hit 294. Now that's a huge number against the defense of Nebraska, number one in the country. You look at what's happening now, they're hitting 248 for the match and only 103 here in the third. Tough serve down the line. Boy, I love that set going against the flow once again by Nicklin Hames. And that's Sun's favorite shot. Swinging hard line from the right side of the court behind the setter. You're right, Oregon pretty good offensively, but they're not doing nearly what they would want to to slow down the offense of Nebraska. Both teams much more successful offensively than we saw last night in that Nebraska-Kentucky matchup. Willow Johnson, nice play on the combination. Oregon in the dig-to-kill phase. Their numbers have to not be anywhere near what they were last night. And Ronica Stone has been pretty quiet through much of this third set. Nebraska leading two sets to none in 15-12. Good touch. Can Oregon turn it into a point? Yes, they can. Off the edge of Jazz Sweet, and out of bounds. 
good crisp swing by number 17 Taylor Borup, the transfer from North Carolina. Fecky again. Wow, that is just one huge hammer, two by four after another off the top of the block. The block is in a good spot, but they just can't control it when it has that much heat. It's going too far for defenders even to turn and track that ball down. Fecky, 15 kills on 32 swings, hitting 406. Short serve again. Look out, Borup's got the cover. Easy play for Nebraska. Yeah, the back row transition for Oregon just has not been there at all. Maybe this time, and missed out of bounds. Oregon needs a timeout. Yeah, Matt Ulmer is going to take his second and final timeout here in Minneapolis as the Nebraska fans, and a lot of them made the trip, can taste it. Potentially their fourth straight trip to the NCAA tournament in the long history of Nebraska volleyball. That is nothing that's happened ever before. Four straight trips on the timeout tonight on Sports Center following the boxing match on ESPN. Exclu an exclusive interview with the Heisman Trophy winner. Who will it be? Highlights from the Army Navy game. Stephen A. and Teddy Atlas break down the fight. Sports Center on ESPN after boxing on ESPN and the ESPN app. Back once again with Karch Kirai. I'm Paul Sunderland. NCAA National Semifinals and Finals coming up at the Target Center just down the road next Thursday and Saturday. Illinois has already advanced. Congratulations to the Fighting Illini. They will play the winner of Nebraska and Oregon, Texas and BYU. Coming up next right here on ESPNU, followed in the nightcap by Stanford and Penn State. Karch, what do you think about those two remaining regional finals, Texas, BYU, and Stanford, Penn State? BYU had an amazing season, undefeated until the last regular season match at Loyola Marymount. Had a late season injury, so their team's a little different, but they still have home court advantage and a great home crowd and a crowd and playing at the atmosphere of Provo, Utah. Then the, the battle of the heavyweights, Stanford and Penn State. You know, this Nebraska team went through a really rough period, losing five out of seven matches during October. Really getting Coach Cook to wonder, look, are we, he's questioning everything. Are we spending enough time on individual work? Are we spending enough time on teamwork? Are we not, are working them hard enough, too hard? And then they pulled their way out of it, and he calls them the most improved team. Of course, he only sees the Big Ten, but in what he's seen in the Big Ten, feels like they have improved dramatically, and they've been on fire since November. And with a comfortable lead here, two sets to none and 17-13. Nebraska has been really good from 20 on. Again, the first two sets were tied at 20 apiece. Nebraska won them both. Continuing to short serve. Nice stab in the right back by Haynes. Borup wristing over the top of the block. Another dig by Haynes. And down the line by number 12, Jazz Sweet. Nebraska on their way now, leading 18 13. If you're wondering about a potential matchup, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Against Illinois, they split their two meetings this year. We're going to have a challenge. Kenzie Maloney was ready to pull the trigger. Look at Maloney's numbers. Among the country's best receivers, all the numbers say that. On the night with 12 digs, Nicklin Hames having a really good night defensively with 15, as is Michaela Fecky with 12. Been so many changes to this Nebraska team since last year, not only on the court with eight new players, but also on the sideline. John Cook lost his lead assistant, Tyler Hildebrand, who is now a colleague of yours at USA Volleyball. That's why he talks about the leadership of Michaela Fecky and Kenzie Maloney and the culture that they have helped to develop. You see the t-shirts at practice, it says, we over me. And that was the theme that the captains and the players came up with. Everything is always about Nebraska volleyball first. Every day in the weight room, every day at practice, every day together on the road. It's all about our team first. Back to the challenge. Let's take a look. The 
We're being told the challenge is for a net in the middle of the rally. So getting to take a look at the entire, I don't see anything yet. If anything touched when Sweet was coming down, it was hair again, not now, a net. I don't see a violation there at all. Maybe Matt Ulmer out of timeouts is challenging here, just trying to slow things down. It's within the rules. Nebraska leading 18-13. Thanks for joining us. The point does stay with Nebraska still to come. Coming up next on ESPNU, Texas and BYU. Do you, can you pick a winner there, Karch? I think I favor BYU a little because that home court advantage has two parts to it. A, a great home crowd that goes nuts for the Cougars, but B, playing at altitude something that changes the flight of the ball a little and it will sail more in the thinner air. And Micaiah White, one of the all-star, Big 12 player of the year, one of the top players for Texas, left the match last night with an injury, eventually did come back. So that will be a big storyline as well. That's coming up next. Mikay Lefecki, a little bit quiet in the opening set with only a couple of kills, but since then, 14 kills in the second and third. And look at the numbers she's putting up. As an outside hitter on the year part, she hit 317. In the Big Ten, that is off the charts. Every player ahead of her in the efficiency rankings were all middle hitters. Nice block again by Fecky, and that's going to be a net violation called against Oregon's Ronica Stone. Stone was having her way early in this match, but she has been slowed significantly. Again, was hitting 375 in the NCAA tournament in the last two matches. Very early in this match, we saw Nebraska not crisp in terms of executing the scouting plan, now doing a great job all over Ronica Stone. Nice swing off the edge of the block by Vanderweider, and I actually sold Ronica Stone a little short. I said 375, the accurate number. <laughs> it's hard to say is 475. 450 against Baylor, 500 yesterday against Minnesota. Perfect pass again. I don't know why. Oregon is serving Kenzie Maloney. She is just absolutely lights out and technically perfect. Again, you probably don't want to put the ball very often on the player with the different color jersey, the defensive specialist. She's almost always the best serve receiver on the court. Off the top of the tape, nice save by Rasky. Oregon's got to be perfect if they want to get back in this set. And Lauren Stiverens, wonderful delivery. I'll tell you what, Nicklin Haynes has developed into not just a good setter, a first-rate player at that position at the highest possible level right now in college volleyball. And, and the NCAA is full of a lot of them. And just a freshman, what a connection she has with Stiverens behind. Jordan Pelter. Go yeah, got to go back to Coach Cook. What a great job he did in that second set, burning all of his challenges. But I think that broke this, the will and the emotion that that uh, any emotion that or the Oregon Ducks team had, and they just cannot slow Nebraska down. So wise move by him to go for the jugular in the second. Stiverens again, and the Nebraska fans who've made the trip, we looked it up. 476 miles, about a seven-hour drive. Yeah, Jordan Poulter, if it is Nebraska and Illinois, it certainly looks like it. Jordan Poulter, the co-setter of the year, along with Samantha Seliger Swenson, and now it is match point. All Nebraska in this regional final. Nebraska playing in their 28th regional final looking for their 15th national semi. That's going to be a net violation called against Nebraska. Oregon needs not a small miracle. They need a huge miracle right now. Trailing Nebraska 24-17 match point. Number two. Nebraska a chance to set a record for their program with their fourth straight national semifinal. Lexi Sun! And they're on their way 
right up the road to the target center. once again to truly one of the elite programs in all of college volleyball, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And what a season for the Oregon Ducks, their best ever finish in the Pac-12 Conference. They finish 23 and 11 and they pull off certainly the biggest upset in the 2018 tournament. A three sets to one victory in this building yesterday afternoon over the number two seed Minnesota Golden Gophers. But on this evening in the regional final, John Cook and his Nebraska Cornhuskers were the best team in the building. Three sets to none. And they will play Illinois. Remember, they split two meetings in Big Ten Conference play over the Fighting Illini. We'll be back with more from Minneapolis right after this. Nebraska moving on to the NCAA National Semifinals. With a big lead, Lexi Sun off the left side. And Nebraska moving on once again. Congratulations to the Cornhuskers. Back in Minneapolis now, two spots in the national semifinals have been decided as the Nebraska Cornhuskers move on for the fourth straight year, and they will take on. The Fighting Illini. That's on Thursday night, just up the road. Joining us, Kenzie Maloney. Congratulations. Thank you. Four straight trips to the national semifinals. Back with Karch Kirai. Talk to us about the matchup against the Oregon Ducks. We talked earlier at practice today with your head coach, John Cook. Did you have to really reset? Because you must have been expecting Minnesota. We definitely were expecting Minnesota, but our coaching staff does a great job of always having us prepared for every team. Um, and we had played Oregon earlier in the season, obviously, so we weren't completely unprepared for them. Um, but we had talked a lot about how we match up really well with Oregon, and so we were pretty confident going into this match tonight, yeah. Looks like the coaching staff was a little upset early, but maybe not quite running the game plan that, yeah. you would, uh, that had laid out. What were the adjustments you made probably halfway or a third of the way through that first set? Um, I would say the main adjustment that we focused on was serving tougher. Um, because they are a really great passing team and obviously their setter can get a ton of kills if she's on the net. So I think he just told us to trust our training on serving, get them out of system so that way they can't really run their offense like they wanted to. Um, and we did that towards the end of the game. They couldn't really get her on the net as much as they would have liked. Um, and then it allowed us to play our game better and really, really terminate on some balls. Kenzie, let's talk about the bigger picture a little bit. You, along with Michaela Fecky, the two captains, it's a very, very different team from last year. Mm -hmm. Eight new players, differences on the coaching staff. We talked a lot about the we, the, the, me, the we, we and me. we over me. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> we over me. Um, talk to us just about the importance of the culture at Nebraska and how it helps you pull through. Karch talked about it. This was not an easy season. You went through a stretch where you lost some matches. Yeah, we did. Um, I don't know. I just think coming in with so many new girls, me and Michaela had a huge job to do starting in the summer. and. You know, we kind of just laid the law down from the beginning and told them, you know, this is how we do things at Nebraska Volleyball, but the eight newcomers that came in made our job so easy. Who's the enforcer? You or Michaela? Uh, I, th I think it's a little bit of both. I think, I think she carries we, a bigger stick. <laughs> Good cop, bad cop. I think we uh, balance each other out really well. Um, but yeah, the, the newcomers that came in made it so easy for us and you wouldn't know that they were freshmen or transfers or anything like that. They just meshed really well with our team and they bought into the culture immediately. So it was really easy for us as captains. Kenzie, congratulations. Thank you, I Wonderful appreciate Wonderful performance once again. And I don't Thank know you. why they serve the Nebraska Cornhusker <laughs> wearing the bright red jersey. You were just absolutely nailed. Thank you. <laughs> congratulations, Thank Kenzie you. Maloney and the Nebraska Cornhuskers, the number seven seed over the Oregon Ducks. Three sets to none to move on to take on Illinois. Once again, split two conference meetings in the Big Ten with the fighting Illini. The Il Illinois, the number three seed, top of the bracket, Stanford and Penn State still to come at 10 Eastern time. And that will be preceded coming up next by number five, Texas, taking on number four, BYU. I want to remind everybody, NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage continues with the national semifinals. 
beginning Thursday, December 13th at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Stan is going to come over and visit with us next. He's a happy Nebraska fan. We'll be back with more right after this. Regional finals on the day. Tyler Denning to bring you all the highlights. We're at Huff Hall for a battle between Illinois and Wisconsin. These teams split in the regular season, but this one has spot in Minneapolis on the line. Set number one, it was junior outside hitter for the Fighting Illini, Jacqueline Quaid, that powered Illinois. Eight kills on 14 swings. She hits 571 as a team. They hit 515, ending on a 5-1 run to take it 25-19. Wisconsin bouncing back and set number two as sophomore setter Sydney Hill he started moving the ball around finds Dana Redkey last year's national freshman of the year for consecutive kills senior Tiana Williams getting in on the action not wanting to see her career end today and Molly Haggerty who had 12 kills on the match registering one as Wisconsin knots it up at one set apiece but in set number three the home team the fighting Illini go back to Jacqueline Quaid. She was absolutely dynamite on the day. Could not be stopped. Attacking out of the back row. Jordan Poulter as well getting in on the action. There's Quaid from the back row with the kills. Tooling off the block as well does Jacqueline Quaid as the fighting Illini take the set. Score of 25-22. So a chance to close things out in set number four in front of their home crowd. And as it was throughout the whole match, Jacqueline Quaid does it again. She ends the day with 25 kills, hits a blistering 379, seven digs as well as with match point. Beth Prince steps up and powers the Fighting Illini onto the national semifinal. It will be their fourth national semifinal in program history. Thank you, Tyler. Back in Minneapolis, a very impressive performance by Illinois, and they've been impressive all season long. There was no question that they should have been the second seed. They were the second best team in the Big Ten Conference, and now that Jacqueline Quaid is playing the way she is around Bastianelli and Poulter, this is a very, very dangerous team, even for a team playing as well as Nebraska. And at this point in the tournament, always a huge advantage to have the experience at the setter position. Jordan Poulter leading that team to a great 17-3 a, a record very difficult to do in the Big Ten. Texas and BYU coming up next. That one controversial seeding situation, number five, Texas, number four, BYU. Your thoughts there, Karch, and then moving on quickly to Penn State and Stanford, the 1-8 matchup. Well, the top one, you figured it either Texas or BYU is going to host that. If BYU hadn't had an injury, they'd probably finish the season undefeated, maybe with a number one seed drop down because of one loss and one injury to a number four. That should be a great matchup. And then seven titles, NCAA championships each for Penn State coming on strong and ruining Minnesota's undefeated Big Ten season near the end. Penn State beating them at home in five and Stanford looking to get after another season. They have all of those people all of those two years ago freshmen who, along with Inky Ajaniku, won an NCAA title. Now, two more years under their belt, lots of experience. Let's talk about Nebraska. We didn't bury the headline when we talked about Oregon's upset of Minnesota. And Nebraska right now, according to their coaching staff, according to the numbers and what they're doing on the court, they are playing their best possible volleyball. So how do you see the matchup next week between Illinois and Nebraska, two teams that split during the course of the regular season and know one another very well? They do. That's the difference. They're, uh, a team like uh, or a matchup like we just had Nebraska and Oregon both teams will have to do a lot of homework overnight getting very little sleep now a lot of time until Thursday's semifinal they split those matchups and looking for nuances and looking for things that are different from the two times that they played each other something they can take advantage of 
So Nebraska moves on for the fourth straight time. Illinois under Chris Thomas. It was a good program. Remember Kevin Hambly built the program in Champaign-Urbana before he went on to Stanford. Kind of would be interesting if they would somehow meet for an NCAA championship. Kevin Hambly out at Stanford. And speaking of the Stanford Cardinal, we haven't talked about them. You and I haven't an awful lot. Quality team, overall number one seed. But, you know, didn't necessarily look that strong last night against Washington State. Had to go four sets. But the season that they have had, even somebody like Texas coach Jared Elliott said, look, Stanford just was had an, uh, a challenge, a pre-conference challenging schedule that was off the charts. And their one blemish, losing 15-12 at home or late in the fifth set at, sorry, not at home, but at BYU. Other than that, undefeated Pac-12 and blowing through that, that pre-conference season. So they are tested in every way and have the experience with people like Catherine Plummer and Morgan Hentz and Jenna Gray at the setting position, more experience there. So Illinois and Nebraska will play in one semifinal. Who will play in the other? Texas going up against BYU, or will it be Stanford and Penn State? And when you go out to Stanford later tonight at 10 Eastern time, you'll have Russ Rose, Kevin Hambly, but the programs have 14 NCAA championships between them. You expect an awful lot of strategy and an awful lot of moving parts throughout the course of that all-important match. You sure do, and it's on Stanford's home floor. Yep. And uh, talking to Coach Rose earlier, he said, look, that is clearly one of the teams that is most difficult to play, to play on home floor when they saw them much earlier in the season. There's the rest of the bracket. The bottom is decided. Illinois and Nebraska, two teams already in out of the Big Ten Conference. Once again, Texas and BYU coming up next on ESPNU, followed in the nightcap by Stanford and Penn State. For Karch Kirai, I'm Paul Sunderland. Thanks so much to the University of Minnesota. We're wonderful hosts. Saying so long from Minneapolis. We'll be back here next week for the NCAA semifinals and finals. Nebraska moving on. Three sets to none over Oregon. Coming up next, the regional out in Provo. The final coming up between Texas and BYU. Enjoy the rest of the night.